Tonight marks the tenth anniversary of the passing away of the monk that we, or John Fuang students called Lung Lung, which means Venerable Uncle. And John Fuang was Tan Pa, Venerable Father. Lung Lung was the monk from Bangkok who arranged for him, for John Fuang to teach in Bangkok. Even though Lung Lung spent most of his life as a monk in Bangkok, he had met a John Lee when he was very young. He was a young novice out in the provinces. He was very impressed. When a John Lee was building Manasokaram, Lung Lung would get a group of his friends who were at that time studying at a monastery on the Tonburi side of Bangkok. And they'd take the streetcar out walk out to Arasukaram, help on the weekends with the work, all the work that the monks couldn't do but the novices could do, digging holes, planting trees, cutting things, Lung Lung and his friends would do, and then Sunday evening they would head back. One time they got to the streetcar station too late, the last streetcar had gone, so they walked all the way back arriving at their monastery the next dawn. And then they moved to Wamagod. He suggested that the abbot go listen to a John Lee, who was giving Dharma talks at the time in another monastery in Bangkok. The abbot was very impressed. The abbot eventually became Supreme Patriarch. And it was at Lung Lung's instigation that he invited a John Fung to teach. Lung Lung looked after him until John Fung's death. It was helpful in many ways. Two things stand out in his personality. One, he was extremely generous. He had the position of Patrite, which is the monk who looks after all the invitations, arranges who goes to which invitation. And being a Patrite at one of the main monasteries in Bangkok, one of the main funeral monasteries in Bangkok, put him in a position where he could have made a lot of money. But there was a case one time when this patitator, one of the funeral monasteries, became involved in a scandal, it turned out. He had arranged for all the business and the funeral business in the monastery to be taken over by his relatives. And so a newspaper in Bangkok decided to do a survey, checked on the bank accounts of all the patitay in Bangkok, especially of the funeral monasteries. And their report was that Lung Lung was the poorest. Partly his policy was he never went to an invitation unless the people specified that he go. And two, he was just extremely generous with what he got. If anyone's relative died, Lung found out about it, he'd be helpful, arrange for robes, other things that they would need at the funeral. When building the jetty, he had a vision in his meditation one time, a lottery number, and so he arranged to have the lottery number bought. And sure enough, it won. And so half the money he gave to the, the building of the jetty. And he would come out on the weekends sometimes. And there was one night when he noticed that the lay people around midnight, 1 a.m., were getting pretty hungry. So he went down to the kitchen to see if the woman in charge of the kitchen had made any rice porridge. It turned out she'd gone to bed and hadn't done anything. So Lung Lung fixed a pot of rice porridge. Then walked back up to the top of the hill and said to somebody, Okay, there's a pot of rice porridge down in the kitchen. He didn't say, of course, that he had done it, because the lay people probably wouldn't have dared eat it. But that was typical of him. He would be generous, but not in a way that was showing off. There was a phrase in Thai. Sticking gold leaf on the back of the Buddha image. In other words, doing good, but not doing it in a way that you're showing off. And that was very typical of him. He also liked to hand out amulets. He always seemed to have valuable amulets, one sort or another. And he, he had his own collection, but he handed out an awful lot. Someone once had said to him, you probably got a lot of good karma from your past lifetimes with amulets. And he said, no, it's not past lifetimes, it's this lifetime. But as for that money he gained from the 
from the lottery. The other half he spent on a trip around the world. As a young novice, he'd read lots of books, books about geography, books about history, books about all kinds of things. And he was curious to see the places he'd read about. As a novice also, he had gone around and visited all the Ajans, what they called the KG Ajans. These are the ones who were practicing more psychic powers or magical charms. These tended to be monks who were very taciturn, but Lung Lung was very curious about them. He wanted to know. He was not afraid of them, because many of them had reputations where they were very strict, very harsh. He didn't let that deter him. He wanted to ask questions. And we think about the qualities, of the good qualities of people who passed away. This is one of the purposes of remembering them, is to think about what good qualities they had that we don't have that we could adopt from them. And this quality of being inquisitive, of wanting to find out what was going on. That's a good one to imitate. We hear about things, we read about things, but we don't really know until we've seen for ourselves. And we can't expect that knowledge is going to be handed to us on a platter. And sometimes Lung Lung was rebuffed by people when he asked questions. But he kept looking, trying to find out. He kept reading all the way through his life. So then it is good to think about the good qualities of people who passed away. The qualities of generosity. He belonged to that generation that was not wealthy. And so realize, what did he have to be generous with? We had his energy. He had his strength. He was very slight of build, but he had a lot of energy of will. So he was generous with that. I owe him a lot. He was the monk who shaved my head when I ordained, but much more than that. After John Fuang passed away, he looked after me, made sure that the senior monks in Bang Bangkok didn't rope me in when they discovered that I existed. When he got something good, he was always willing to share. There's one story of his that I really like. He was given a gold Buddha image, solid gold, about three, four inches tall. He said to himself, this thing is not appropriate for me. It's something that should belong to the king. So he decided that one day, if he ever ran across the king, happened to encounter the king, he would give it to him. So he kept it in his shoulder bag, wrapped it up in tissue paper so it would look like something that had no value. And sure enough, there was one time he was up in the north at one of the royal projects, visiting with a couple of lay people. And the king happened to fly in his helicopter. So Lung Lung told the lay people to go away. He went and sat under a tree. The king got, got out of the helicopter, saw Lung Lung, and came over and bowed down. And Lung Lung slipped him the, the gold boot image. And the king unwrapped it and said, oh, this is gold. And Lung Lung said, I know. And so the royal attendants were standing by, ready to receive the image from the king. They had their hands out. The king looked at them, took the image, put it in his pocket, bowed down again, and left. That's a good quality to have. You got something good, and your immediate reaction is, who can I give this to? As John Lee says, this is what makes it really yours, is when you give it away. So it's good to think about the generosity of people in the past.
about how we can continue that principle of generosity now. We're living in a difficult time. A lot of people are under a lot of strain with the curfews, with the, the isolation. And one way of making it easy on ourselves and easy on others is to be as generous as we can with our time, with our energy, realizing that we're keeping alive a good tradition. A tradition that goes all the way back to the Buddha himself.